Roads crack, that's normal. But how come we can build bridges that hold up a freight train, yet we still can't keep a smooth road through January? I kept seeing the same pothole show up over and over again, so I decided to dig into what's actually going on underneath the pavement, and why fixing it isn't nearly as simple as just filling in the hole. The way potholes form may be relatively simple, but to visually understand the symptom, you need to examine the root cause. A typical road consists of five layers. At the bottom, there's the subbase. It's basically just native soil or clay. On top of that, we have about a foot of granular B aggregate, which acts as a sturdy, but still relatively cheap fill, consisting of larger stones all the way down to stone dust. Next is about six inches of granular A aggregate. This mixture is very similar to GB, but the biggest stones are only about three quarters of an inch. With the road base now in place, it's time for paving. A rapid setting bitumen mixture is sprayed on top of the GA to ensure a strong bond between road surfaces. This is known colloquially as colas in Canada. It's sprayed onto the road base just before paving commences. Then, the first lift of asphalt is laid, usually about 50 millimeters thick, or 1.9685 inches in America's so-called freedom units. Next, another layer of the bitumen spray, followed by the second and typically final lift of 40 millimeters of asphalt, or again, 1.5748 inches of the freedom units. Now that we know what a typical road consists of, we can explore the way in which potholes occur. It starts with a crack. It can be smaller than the eye can see, but a small crack opens the door for that pesky little thing engineers have been at war with since the dawn of modern engineering, water. The kryptonite of all civil infrastructure, this little pest of a substance can now get into our road even in the smallest of fractures. When water gets into the road, it softens the asphalt and road base. Then, the constant weight and impact of traffic traveling across this crack degrades the asphalt, enlarging the crack. Even worse, in places like Canada or northern parts of the US, where temperatures fluctuate drastically, the water in the crack will freeze, causing it to expand, expediting this process dramatically. On top of that, when it's forecasted to snow, the city will go and sprinkle salt all over the roads. And while yes, this does help keep the roads clear, it also accelerates the rate at which the road absorbs the moisture. The bigger the crack gets, the more water can infiltrate into the road base, pooling underneath the asphalt. This constant cycle of the road base getting wet, then drying, then getting wet again, all while under constant loads from above, creates a void under the asphalt. Again, this is expedited significantly by temperature changes. The water under the road will freeze, expand, and bend the asphalt above it, causing, you guessed it, more cracks. You can see how it can just give out under the weight of traffic. An even more dramatic example of this happens with snowplows. Have you ever wondered why after a snowfall has been cleared, you could have sworn there were more potholes around that weren't there just a couple of days ago? Well, there's a good reason for that. As you most likely know, when a road gets plowed, they use a massive blade on the front of a truck. Now this blade doesn't just push snow, it catches on anything sticking up high enough and is loose enough to bypass the snowplow's shoes, if they even have them equipped. Plow shoes are meant to raise the plow just enough as to not catch on anything they don't want to, but they aren't used on all roads or by all cities. And if the plow does catch the edge of a soon-to-be pothole, it rips it out of the ground, instantly creating a sizable pothole, kinda like this. So between the cracking, the soaking, the freezing, the thawing, and the occasional snowplow ripping half the road out, it's easy to see how a tiny fracture becomes a full-blown crater. It's not one thing that causes potholes, it's everything. A perfect storm of bad weather, bad luck, and sometimes bad maintenance. And once that first chunk of asphalt is gone, the clock starts ticking. Because every car, every truck, every plow that rolls over that weakened spot is just making the hole bigger and the repair bill higher. The real question isn't how potholes form, it's why we still haven't figured out how to stop them. When a pothole shows up, cities have two choices, or three, I guess, if you count doing nothing. You can fix it properly, or slap a cold patch on it and hope it holds. Cold patch is basically fast food for road repairs. It's pre-mixed asphalt that can be shoveled right out of a bag. No heating, no fancy equipment, no waiting for good weather. On a freezing February morning when crews can't exactly cook up a fresh batch of hot asphalt, cold patch is the easy answer. You just dump it in a hole, tamp it down a little, move on to the next one. It's fast, it's cheap, and it works. Kind of. Cold patch doesn't bond with the surrounding road like real hot laid asphalt does. It doesn't seal, it doesn't fuse, it just occupies a hole. Nice. Much like a band-aid loosely taped over a wound. Give it enough rain, snow, and traffic, and the cold patch will pop right back out, leaving you with the same pothole or one even bigger. Cold patch isn't a solution, it's a stall tactic. A way to survive the winter without completely losing the road and to buy time until the real repair season shows up, if it ever does. 
So why does this cycle keep repeating even after this supposed repair season comes and goes? Why does it feel like no matter how many potholes get filled, more just pop up the next day? It's simple, really. Permanent fixes need three things, time, money, and good weather. Cities rarely have all three at once, and the planet definitely doesn't care about our road maintenance schedules. Across cities and towns, the story plays out the same way. Roads aren't repaired, they're patched, and then patched again, and then patched again. When budgets get tight, the city doesn't rebuild, they triage. They slap some cold patch down, hope it holds out until spring, and pray it doesn't turn into a crater the likes of which haven't been seen since the time of the dinosaurs. But cutting corners comes with a price. Fixing a road after it fails can cost five to 10 times more than just maintaining it properly in the first place. It's like skipping oil changes, except now the engine is a whole city's infrastructure. And then there's the hidden price we don't see. The lawsuits, the bent axles, the broken wheels, the people who lose control at just the wrong moment. When roads fail, it's not just the asphalt that breaks, it's trust. Trust that our local government actually cares to fix everyday problems. Quebec's roads are so riddled with potholes, it feels like you're driving across a war zone. But hey, who needs smooth roads when you can spend a billion dollars streamlining a licensing system that's been stuck in development for eight years and still doesn't work? The good news is, by the time it's finished, you might not need a license anymore because there'll be no roads left to drive on. The war against potholes isn't over yet, and believe it or not, there's hope. Around the world, engineers are fighting back. New self-healing asphalts are being tested. Tiny capsules mixed into the pavement that release healing agents when cracks start to form. Cities are deploying AI-driven mapping drones, scanning entire neighborhoods for early signs of road failure before it becomes visible. Some places are even using infrared heaters to rebond cracked asphalt on site, a fix that's faster, cheaper, and much stronger than the old shovel and dump method. And if you want to see the future, look to the Netherlands, look to the UK. Plastic roads, graphene-infused asphalt, materials that last longer, flex better, and resist cracking from the start. The technology is there. The question isn't whether we can fix the problem. It's whether our governments are willing to actually invest in it. And if our population is willing to accept changes, which historically hasn't gone over too well. Nothing unites angry old men faster than painting a new line on a road they've been speeding down since the 70s. Potholes are easy to laugh at. Just look at Quebec. But that's until it's your axle, until it's your hospital bill, until it's your tax dollars chasing the same patch year after year. They might seem small, just a crack, just a bump, just another joke about bad roads. But every pothole is really a warning shot, a symptom of a system that patches over problems instead of fixing them, of budgets that cut corners today and hand us the bill tomorrow. Because when you ignore small problems long enough, they don't stay small, they turn into something bigger, into lawsuits, into infrastructure that quietly falls apart underneath our feet. In the endless war against potholes, we might be destined to lose, unless something changes. If you enjoyed this, let me know by commenting and leaving a like down below. If you didn't, file a complaint with your local public works department. I hear they respond about as well as cold patch holds up.